And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who's called Peter. Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into what service city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into the house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace be upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they'll deliver you up to the councils. They will scourge you in their synagogues. And you should be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye to another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye of, are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and falleth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me. He that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. 
And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John... The Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it before us. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you will receive it, this is Elijah which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It's like unto children sitting in the markets, calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and you've not danced. We've mourned unto you, you've not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath the devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes." But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungered, and they that were with him? how he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well, on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence 
And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I'll put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Amen. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he'll spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished, then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then said one unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto them, that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Make my life today a life of prayer that I may intercede for souls everywhere. 
Lord, give me a burden today for the lost on life's perilous sea. Help me guide them safely to Thee. Lord, help me, I pray. One sat alone beside the highway, begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and bade his darkness flee. It's time to open the word once again with evangelist Lester Roloff on the Family Altar program. Glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. There are so many chapters in the Bible uh, that uh, become people's favorite chapters. And I do not say maybe that this chapter tonight is my favorite chapter, even though it's a great and marvelous chapter. You know, if I received an invitation from the Queen of England and to visit the palace, uh, I do not know that I'd go. I really don't. I mean, that's, the Lord had to tell me to go. But that's not the greatest invitation, if I did get one. Now we're going to find us the text. We sure are. We're going right now to Matthew chapter 11. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now look out, we're coming up to a great passage here. One of the greatest men that ever lived. You see, when a man gets saved, you ought to fall out with the devil. Of course, I'll say this, there's no way to fall out with the devil real good until you fall in with Christ. You've got to fall in with him. Now, uh, I didn't fall out with the devil and didn't fall in. I fell in with Christ and then I fell out with the devil. I found somebody so much better than the devil until I thought, my, that'd be cheap stuff going back to him. Right. I mean, I swapped fathers a long time ago. I got me a lot better father. And so he said, uh, when John had heard in the prison, in the prison, you mean John's in jail? Yes, sir, he's in jail. You said, right, to go to jail for telling the truth about Jesus. He was Jesus' bulldozer. He was his road grader. That's right. He'd been getting everything fixed. By the time Jesus came along, they come and rested John threw him in jail. Don't you know John would like to have been with Jesus? I guess he wouldn't be so bad to be in the jail, but it sure is bad when this thing happens to you right here. And I tell you, when people go to jail, there's a heap of things getting in their mind. All right. He said he, he, he uh, heard in the prison the works of Christ. He sent to of his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Do we look for another? Now, Jesus could have gotten a little rough on him. He said, can you, he could have said, you go back and tell that backslider. You go back and tell that old boy, he ought to be, he didn't tell him that. Jesus was always so tender and so gracious and so patient. That's reading he, he won a lot of them too. And so he said, then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go show. That's it. Now that's, that's a real text for you boys and girls and men and women when you go home. Do you know that? Go show. But you can't go show if you don't know. You've got to have a no-so before you can have a show-so. And that's your need right there. Now, you've got to come to the place where you love Jesus just like you loved and lived for the devil before you got here. Now, and that'll be sufficient. But you see... Uh, people think you uh, say, well, I wouldn't want to be a fanatic. Well, I've come to a place where I do want to be one. Yeah. I don't want to be anything short of a fanatic. That's right. But you know what? And I say it to my shame. I've never acted. I mean, if I could put it in the right way, I've never acted a bigger fool about Jesus as people act a fool about the devil. That's right. I mean, they'll just go crazy about him. I mean, they'll just get a car, steal a car. We had some boys ran away, stole eight cars. Eight cars. Send a check for $105, you know, uh, for some of those fancy hubcaps. 
that the boys had a flat and just tore the things up, you know, getting them off of there. And the man said uh, he didn't have any insurance. One of these uh, new doodle bugs, you know, or cars, one of these fancy deals, you know. I don't know what the thing is, you know. And But anyhow, he said, uh, he said, hey, are you going to do the right thing? I said, we always do the right thing. I mean, have to. We're living for Christ. I mean, there's no other way. I mean, he said, well, you're going to pay? I said, sure, we're going to pay. Come on out here. I'm going to talk it over with you. <laughs> That's right. And a couple of them came. A couple of them came. I got to do the right thing. Told them about Jesus. That's right. Amen. Uh, and then gave them a check for $105. You'd say, Brother Walk, did you have to? Don't cuss the dead. But you see, you don't live for Christ doing what you have to do. You do what you ought to do. Right. Amen. We got a testimony to keep up. I mean, we got to, we're never going to bow over a dime or a quarter or a hundred or a thousand dollars. Brother, God wants his people to pay their debts and to do right. Amen. Now, I'll tell you folks, when you get back home, when you get back home, you straighten up all that stuff you made crooked before you left, too. Amen. They have a last one of you. And I guarantee you, some of you got a lot of things to straighten up when you get home. I mean, just don't leave them stinking, decaying bills over there. Get on back and get your job and get them paid, see? Amen. God's people pay their debts. And I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher. Fact is, they ought to run him out of town if he doesn't pay his bills and his debts. I mean, every Christian, every deacon, every person that's born again ought to maintain good works. See? Amen. Amen. Said, you go show John again those things which you do here and see. I never had got that. I just never had gotten that. Did you know what he did? He said, you tell him first what you hear. And then you can tell him what you see. Faith comes with what? There you are. Now I'll guarantee you, it would be better to hear the Word of God than it would be just to see some preacher on television or see some fellow. If you listen to the Word of God and receive the Word of God, hearing, this, this is the way that Jesus gets. He goes through your ear. He come, Now I know you can see a man walking and living for Christ, but what we've got to do is to hear the gospel. And I, I mean by that, I do not believe that it's possible for anything to substitute for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's got to be preached. The secret, one of the great secrets of the city of refuge is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just put her down. I'm, I hear it all over this country. They say, well, boy, we get preached to. I mean, I get up and preach. I don't care how I preach or how hard or how long. They say, well, that's nothing new to me. We're used to that. I mean, we get it all the time. I mean, this is our daily diet. And here's what you'll find. People do not want gospel preaching till they get saved and then they can't get too much of it. Amen. Amen. And until you get to where you like the gospel and love the word of God, you haven't got anything yet. Right. Secret of everything is in this book uh, right here. So he said, I want you to go now and uh, show John the things which you do here and see. The blind receive their sight. Now this sounds like the city of refuge. Anybody drinks liquor is blind. Anybody that smokes cigarettes is blind. Man came into my home. He's hooked on cigarettes, and yet he pled with me. He said, Brother Wolof, I must be delivered. I said, You can be. I said, You mean that Jesus could save you and keep you for eternity and not be able to deliver you from a little bitty cigarette? I said, Well, of course he'll deliver you from it. He certainly will. I went in a drunkard's home. You know, for two years, he'd maintained a real testimony except for one thing down at Vider, Texas. And uh, he, he, he was outstanding testimony of deliverance from liquor, and uh, down he went. Down he went. And, and the pastor, one of these loving, wonderful men of God, he drove and drove and drove until he found him. And he found him in a motel room, and he took him like you would a little baby and hauled him home while even the children were saying, Mother, get a divorce, get rid of him, kick him out! And the preacher was loving and leading and praying and stayed with him all night long, all night long. Never did leave him, just stayed with him and nursed him back to where he could think with his mind. And he said, Preacher, I want you to go see him with me. And I said, I'll do it. After the afternoon service, we drove over that lovely home, beautiful home, walked inside. He was sitting there, and he said, Brother Wolof, I've been a disappointment to my pastor, but he stayed with me. I've been a disappointment to Jesus. I've been a disappointment, I know, to my church. And, and I said to him, what do you have in that pocket right there? 
I said, that's the key to your deliverance right there. Most people don't realize that. An alcoholic's got to come free and lose. I would never trust an alcoholic as long as he smokes cigarettes. Right. Never. I'll bound you 99 times out of 100. He'll go back to his bottle unless he gives up the poison in this pocket right here. Well, he said, those are cigarettes. I said, son, I said, my dear man, uh, one of these uh, big uh, machine operators, you know, I said, uh, do, you, do you realize that those have to go? He said, I'd like for them to go. And you know what? In a little bit, he showed up at church, and the pocket was empty. And when the invitation was given, down he came. And he said, Brother Wolof, never again will I touch a cigarette. I've seen the tie-in. I've seen the tie-in. You can just put it down, fellas. We're in this work 24 hours a day, and there's only one way that God's going to deliver you, and that's going to be a complete job. Amen. He doesn't halfway build his house. He'll put everything in it needs to be put in it. Amen. He'll set you free. The Bible said, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It didn't say half free or nearly free. It'll set you free. And if the sun shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Blind receive their sight. People come here blind. They're blind. Lame walk. And, and people come in here limping. People come in here tired out, wore out. Uh, the lepers are cleansed. You know what that is? That's dirty flesh. Dirty flesh. You know, we got a notion running loose in the country today that there are two things that you can't get delivered from. And I'd like to set you straight. One of them is dope addiction. And then the other, the other sin is homosexuality. And of course, that is the number one sin of the world just before Jesus comes. And we're there now. And if you read my letters, if you went to the jails where I do them, and if you read the letters from the penitentiaries and from the reform schools, I'll guarantee you, you'll find that the prevailing sin today, I mean, the end, I'm, I mean, old Sodom is here again, see? I'll guarantee you we're living in Gomorrah and Sodom again. And brother, it, it's the thing that tears up people's minds and leaves. Listen, the two end time sins are going to be, and they're tied together, the two end time sins will be television and homosexuality. Hey, y'all go ahead and breathe normally because I'll guarantee you this is the truth. Television is going to warp the mind and homosexuality is going to completely devour the flesh. And uh, man is going to be sunk in his own quad bar and his own invention. You watch and see. And we're going to call it progress. And here's what's happening. Modernism and the false prophets or preachers of this day because they have no remedy for either are saying like the doctors say when you have uh, some sort of a heart attack or incurable disease, you're going to have to learn to live with it. You can't live with sin. You'll, it's just like somebody, uh, you know, there's a prevalent saying crossing the country and, 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 and all we need to dig in after these bywords and semi-profanity, uh, people say, my goodness, why, you lied. You don't have any goodness. Why didn't you tell the truth and say my badness? Yeah. <laughs> but the flesh is too proud to say tell the truth. Yeah. No, sir. So that's and just like my daddy. And bless his heart, he didn't know any better because preachers didn't tell him. One of his words was the great redeemer. And he'd be so disgusted with me. Listen, he's using Jesus' name in vain. That's the, and then uh, something else. Uh, my, my aunt would always use, well, the great I am. Brother, that's Jesus' name. You better, when you say the great I am, you better be on your knees or in reverence to God. You better be honoring God. You better not be trifling with God. No, the devil's got so many things, and he's pulled the wool over the eyes of God's people. And so he said, I want you to tell them something. Go show them and tell them. Uh, blind receive their sight. Lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. You know what a leper is? Jesus cleansed the lepers. It's a disease of the flesh. You know what cancer is? Disease of the flesh. It's, it's, it's rotten flesh. That's what it is. And, and when you eat rotten food, you'll have rotten flesh. I mean, everybody knows that. When you drink rotten drinks, you'll have rotten flesh. I mean, whatever you put in your system that's rotten, it'll make you rotten on the inside. Of course, Mother Nature will do her best to sack it up and block it out and run it out and sweat it out. But, I mean, she can't get rid of all of it. You just keep feeding it down there, and some of it's going to stay. And then that goes. So he said the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. And notice, the poor have the gospel preached to them. That's unusual, but that's Jesus. 
he was so unusual. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. But you know, I've got to go to my text. It's found in the 28th verse. This is the greatest invitation in the entire Bible right here. This is the one that old Dr. Charles Fuller quoted so many times before he went home to be with the Lord. Come unto me. He didn't say come to my secretary. He didn't say come to one of my aides. He didn't say come to my church. He didn't say come to the baptismal waters. He didn't say come to do better. He didn't say come uh, to some big organization. He said come to me. And brother, if you want what he's fixing to offer tonight and everybody needs it, you're going to have to come to him to get it. And I'll tell you, if ever I've seen a tired bunch of people, it's alcoholics and narcotic addicts when they come walking or dragging him. I mean, they're tired. They're tired physically, they're tired mentally, they're tired out. I mean, they're dead in trespasses and sin. If you want to see somebody that's tired, uh, you watch a man after he spends all he's got in righteous living. I'm just going to take it for granted. As long as a man will show up to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's hope for him. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye. You know, one of the things about this invitation, it includes so many people. Now, when you put the word A-double-L, that means just not anybody left out. And he said, God is not willing that one should perish, but as A-double-L, all should come to repentance. And brother, the only way you'll keep from perishing is to come to repentance. And I believe one of the great doctrines that needs to be preached today is repentance. I believe we're going to have to literally repent of our sin and ask God to forgive us and cleanse us and, uh, and, and, and show some godly sorrow for sin. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Now then, when you get like that, you're ready to accept God's mercy. You can't get a man. That's the reason it's hard to get a man. Uh, that, for instance, one of the hardest fellows we ever get delivered is a man that's drawing a pension. If he's getting three, or four, five hundred dollars a month, you know, or two hundred dollars a month, I mean, what he'll do, as he usually do, he'll save it up while he's here, and when he gets a pretty good nest egg, he said, "Man, I can stay drunk for thirty days on that." See, <coughs> never give a dime to the work here, which I think is a crime. I really do. You know, oh, there's so many things I could say, but one of the things you got to learn if you get saved, folks, you got to learn to give. You'll never learn to live till you learn to give. Never will. And I tell you what, you might, you might keep the victory by not supporting the work that God got you saved through, but you'll not get the blessings God has in store for you. And I tell you what, I believe, I mean, if I was out in the Corpus Christi Bay and my old boat had gone down like it did one night over yonder to air base, I mean, over the bay, dark as pitch and I was alone. But I tell you, I was, I was really anxious to get to the shore. And I started swimming, the little boat going under, and all the stuff was floating. And I wasn't worried about anything except me. I wanted to get to the shore. And I started swimming. But I tell you one thing. If I'd have just kind of finally gone under, and all of a sudden, an old fishing buddy. I mean, if he'd just come cruising along the boat and reached out and not by the hair of the head, I don't think he'd have found enough. But if he could have reached, you know, reached down and got me by my hand and and got me on the bow of the boat and pumped the water out, and I came to, and I said, uh, am I in heaven, John? He said, no, you got some more work to do down here. I found you about this. Dry I drowned, and I, uh, you suppose I'd uh, kick him or shoot him or hurt him? No. Uh, listen, I imagine I'd love him better. He saved me. I don't understand how people could let a rescue boat come by and save them from drowning and not do something for the man who operated the rescue boat. I'm not, I mean, I'm not begging. I'm just simply saying, you, you're cheating yourself. We're going to make it whether you ever do a dime's work or not. I mean, I promise you that, see. Thank God our ministry doesn't depend on a bunch of ingrates. Our ministry depends on God and the people that love God. But I tell you, you'd be a lot better off. A lot of people wonder why the Lord blesses uh, me and Brother John and some of the rest of us. We just give what we got back in the work, that's all. I don't brag about it. It wasn't mine to start with. I didn't, I didn't have a buffalo nickel in my pocket that I remember when God called me to preach. I mean, what did I have? I got more than I've ever had, see? And yet, I, I, the way to keep it is recognize that none of it belongs to you, not a yeah, bit of it. Right. Uh, I went home and, you know, I, my wife had a big old deal sitting up there, you know, and, and uh, of course, she always gets a card that says a lot of pretty things, you know. I don't know, you know, just a whole lot of things. And I read it, and then, but you know what I enjoy? 
I saw a little old piece of paper that had her name signed to it, uh, Mrs. L.L. L. Roloff. And she had $100. And I said, Amen. Now this, I mean, now, I looked, I said, That's my sweetheart right there. See, I mean, <laughs> oh, you'd say you're too money-minded. No, I'm not going to spend a dime of it for me. I wanted to use it for the work. What are we going to say as we close the message? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. And dear friends, I'd like to remind you, you don't get it at the liquor store. You can't find it at the drugstore. You don't find it on the operating table. And you don't find it on the couch listening to some psychiatrist tell you to forget the Bible and don't pray, brother. You're going to find it when you get to Jesus. Amen. No other place to get that kind of rest. And that's all the kind of more. I don't want this store bought rest. Amen. I don't want this stuff you have to drink out of a bottle. I don't want this stuff that comes out of a sharp needle. I don't want this stuff uh, that makes you feel worse when you wake up than you did before you got it. Oh, listen, dear friends. Jesus said, uh, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. What an invitation. And yet, did you know most people have rejected it? I guarantee you, more people will go to sleep tonight on man-made sleeping pills than on this verse right here. To me, that's a tragedy, Patty. It's a tragedy. You think of the people that Jesus said, and he told them all to come. Everybody can come, the rich and the poor, the president and the king and queen, and all the ditch diggers and drunkards and nobody. Come on, all of you. I'll put you to sleep tonight. Thank God for the privilege. Oh, I remember the time when my little old tired, weary body would come a dragging in after a busy day of playing and my face is dirty and my feet is dirty and my little old clothes is dirty and my mother would wash me and bathe me and lay me in her arms and rock me many times on an old straight chair. But it just as smooth as a rocker. For about two minutes, my eyes would close. Talk about rest. My mother said, I love you dirt and all. Yeah. Yeah. Dear friend, she said, you come get in my arms. I'll give you some rest. Jesus is saying with those outstretched arms of love, nails, scarred hands, drunkards, dope addicts, uh, men and women up and out and down and out. Come on, all of you, and I'll give you rest. And the tragedy is, and people will pass Jesus up and pass Calvary up and Golgotha up and walk in a drugstore and say, as they pull out the billfold, give me $15 worth of rest. And yet you'll be tired of when you get through taking the filth and you were. Walk in a liquor store and say to some old fat saloon keeper with his big Cadillac or Lincoln Continental sitting out there by the curb, I want about $20 worth of fun. Wake up in the jail in the morning, the fun's all gone. Oh, Somebody said you're charged with drunken driving. Your license is going to be, you can't drive no more. About the best you can do is to walk or get a bicycle. Brother, that's the devil's fun for you. Yeah. You better listen to me tonight. Jesus is saying my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you, he said. Learn of me. Learn of me. That's after you come, you see, and get your rest. He said, now come and let's learn together. I want to teach you some things, for my yoke is easy. Oh, listen, when I talked to a boy locked up in the jail, he said, my, my yoke is hard. I said, mine is easy. Mine is easy. Talk to the men in jail and all of them. I said the other night, how many of you want to go home with me tonight? Hold up your hand. And every hand went up and waved those fingers. Their yoke is hard and mine is easy. Don't talk to me, dear friend. Oh, you watch that old drunkard stagger down to a weed patch tonight on a cold night and wake up in the morning frostbitten. His yoke is hard. Yeah. Brother, his burden's not light. My yoke is easy. Burden's light. Why, it's the best life in the world to live. Yeah. Why, and, and the best is yet to be. Yeah. Think about one of these days. I walk through those pearly gates and my unworthy feet in this redeemed body that God's preparing for me. Walks down those golden streets. I tell you, I believe one foot will holler hallelujah, and another will holler amen, and mine the glory. Yes, yes sir. Amen. Think of that, it won't be long. Thank you for joining us today on the Family Altar Program with Lester Roloff. And they were blessed. He gave the weary rest. He made the blinded eyes to see. He fed the hungry soul 
And he made the wounded whole By the waters of blue Galilee They sat at his feet And they looked in his face Content in his presence to be For no one before had cared for their souls Like the stranger who sat by the sea